I was in a very dark, empty place. Like there was a void in my soul somewhat. I couldn't even get myself up from my own bed in the morning. For me, even there is only one harassment case, it's already an urgent issue. I told myself, I won't tell you because others told me you're not good, I'll stop. My father passed away when I was 11 years old. Now I was too young to understand how to grieve and how to process the whole event. But I did feel um, some sort of emptiness, like there was something missing, like there was a void in my soul somewhat. Um, and the only way I knew how to cope was to find something outside of myself to fill that void. I tend to substances. This was when I decided to bring hell back home, yeah. And I was on meth amphetamine every day for 10 years. I went full blast into the addiction and yet it didn't solve my problem or fill that void. My name is Ika Sherin. I'm a certified recovery coach and I'm from Malaysia. When I was young, my father wanted me to come to Taiwan because he thought I was unsafe in the gym. 然后刚好当初的柬埔寨就是有很多人流行结婚来台湾，所以我就来台湾了。那到今年已经十八年。Hello， 大家好，我是李佩香，来自柬埔寨，今年三十七岁，是台北大学的大一学生。其实我觉得无论是相亲或是谈恋爱，重点是在于说。我们有彼此的那个不同隔阂，所以让我们没有办法那么的信任彼此，会感到寂寞，因为自己想要说什么就说不出来，然后听对方的也不是那么清楚的理解，那这时候就会有一些孤单的感觉。好像我们除了语言的隔阂、文化的不同之外，我觉得说，可能对于台湾这边看待当初所谓的“外籍新娘”这个词，它会有一个一道墙，有一个隔阂这样子。有时候觉得很委屈啊，然后下雨的时候会自己一个人哭。When my parents were separated when I was about 20 years old, so that is the period when I just graduated from college and I was excited to actually work for my dad. But because of their separation, I had to choose to help my mother during the separation process. And at that time, I had to enter a survival mode because we were both cut off financially. So we were all struggling for the, the next four years and I had no job and I had no financial security. I had a lot of anger within me, a lot of unprocessed sadness and frustration. Mm -hmm. 
My name is Stephanie Hermawan and I'm from Indonesia and I'm an entrepreneur and also an angel impact investor that invests in social enterprise. At that time I was partying a lot with my friends and um, just having fun and trying to be happy but actually I wasn't very happy but I didn't know how I felt so I was trying to numb all my feelings with whatever it is can be food can be alcohol can be anything at that time during my survival period when i started my own company at that time i was focusing a lot in my business and then i thought i was being happy right When先生离开的时候,然后我是带着立勋一起 没有人住一两年了，就会长那个蜘蛛啊这些的。这这时候我会觉得很，就生命中最最黑暗的的时期。那时候我我应该是撑住吧，嗯，因为我那时候也是会。担心伤害到小孩Growing up, I thought I was worthless. I thought I was trash. I didn't know it was a form of disease, just like cancer, just like heart disease, where I could actually go to a professional and get help. But instead, I just go back into my, you know, um, loneliness. In Malaysia, um, mental health um, or even addiction issues, this is something that people don't talk about. It's something that um, you, you know you have that problem, you sweep it under the carpet. I mean, I am surrounded by loved ones and yet, you know, I could be in a room filled with people and yet feel so alone. And on top of that, I'm wearing layers of masks because I'm pretending to the world that I'm okay, I'm fine. When mom found out about my addiction, it broke her heart. I mean, her whole life came crumbling down, like, you know, she couldn't sleep, she couldn't eat. She was always trying to save me. And she came to a point where she was just exhausted. I remember her touching my head, she was like, Oh, my poor daughter, you know, I love you so much. And she walked away. And that was the time I realised, oh no, mom is not chasing after me anymore, you know. That's when I, I don't know, I was just at my lowest point. And that's when I remember praying to God. I don't know why was that prayer different, but at that moment, I remember my head, I was in uh, the sujot, um, my head was literally on the floor and I was just bawling and just crying to God. I'm like, God, God. There's got to be another way out. I don't want to fight anymore. Tell me what to do. I surrender. And that's when I checked myself into rehab and that was one of the best gifts I had ever given myself. And I've never turned ever since. Yeah, I've been sober since.
biggest achievement as an entrepreneur was Ernst and Young Entrepreneur Winning Woman in 2012. I still remember when I got all the awards in 2012. The end of the year, I want to celebrate. So I went to Japan for a holiday. I'm supposed to be happy. But somehow inside of me, I don't know what's going on. I just keep crying, crying, crying. Just kept crying in my bed, but I didn't know what at that time. I was just lost. Maybe that was the lowest point in my life. I realized that I was a high-functioning depressed person during that process. I was trying to be perfect in the outside because I need to perform things in the office, in business. I need to look happy. I need to look successful. So you're trying to suppress everything inside of you. So a lot of unprocessed emotion that I have to deal with that I've been ignoring for so long. Egon 我觉得大概十年前就开始我觉得有些空间让我去发挥的话自由的 <laughs> Thankfully, my friend introduced me to this meditation program, a seven days program, and that transformed my whole life. So now, I believe that having a life purpose is like having a compass where you want to go in life. Because without your life purpose, you're just like driving a car, but you don't know where you're going. And then before you know it, you're running out of gas. My life purpose that I realized is that to transform the business world. Because right now, the business world and the entrepreneurs are so focused on just for profit, only for shareholders. But they forgot that, hey, their business can be good for the society, can impact the earth, can impact the humanity, right? The way that you source your material is that bad for the environment? Is that good for the environment? So that's why I love mentoring and investing in social enterprise because they have a specific purpose, positive impact to the world. When I was in rehab, you know, just watching my peers, you know, um, growing, um, like some of them will come in by force and they come in handcuffs and don't want to be there. But, you know, after a few days or a week later, you see them opening up to recovery. That just brought me so much joy. And I decided then that, you know, this is something that I want to do. So 
so I, um, since after coming out from rehab, I started taking training to be a certified recovery coach. I, I've taken a few trainings and now I'm sitting for my master's in addiction studies. I mean, like, I, I'm still doing music production. So if you love me, just say so. Cause I can play these games with you no more. Okay, stop. All right, that's not bad. We'll do another take. More expression, we need more from you. I still enjoy that work. Um, I don't know, but I know that recovery has made me a lot kinder, a lot uh, more forgiving more caring and loving towards others and have a lot more acceptance like before. Yeah, um, helping others just makes me feel whole and uh, complete and I feel like finally, oh, I found my life purpose. <laughs> drive smile My name is Jansi, I am 22 years old, I am driving now. Hello, hello. Hi, hello. Hi, hello. Hi, hello. I am in Bangalore City, this is a slum. In this slum, there are boys in this slum. If you are in this slum, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Kaying ala bebara pandru de, apur met garments kur de, kami samblo mana, ada larn de, allar aduk da pawang o, awul kur eder pap perkade, namba nari increase awo, ada lai irkwer kade, awu perker vela na perker veli lieda rukno, anda mari, ipotama tau ikir de, angga road la we, cire cina kade potu de angga angga irkir de. Tentu aite perkata ini mari tarik semua macam ni. Aduk apapun yang gua lal. Ya, nama ibu dia rukno. Ya, nama ini dah veli purma, vidu purma, pedikirama vidu lal. Ula dah rukud. Ula gom veli abdi rukud ni yang teril. Kunci kunci news semua parti. Apa nama nariyo veli pora wesda. Semua macam teri. Being a woman in Indonesia, we are reminded every day that we don't belong. Unfortunately, most of the time, I don't feel safe. Accessing public space in Jakarta itself, I felt that I, I am vulnerable in terms of harassment. In Indonesia, women most of the time are still being seen as a second-class citizen. My name is Anindya Restuviani. People call me Vivi, and I am 29 years old, and I'm from Jakarta, Indonesia. The aim of Hollaback itself as a global movement is basically to eradicate, to stop violence, harassment that occur in specifically public space. I started Hollaback because I have personal experience that I was personally harassed. I was raised in a Muslim family, so my family was trying to put me in like reading Quran lesson and stuff like that. And I happened to have a 
teacher, uh, my Quran reading teacher, who sexually harassed me. I think I was 10 years old at that time, so he was trying to touch me, and then he basically justifying his act of groping and touching by saying that because he was like teaching me on how to pray and then it's just like oh your movement was wrong and then he just touched my thigh and like stuff like that i was lucky enough that i have a parent who is very aware of this kind of issue who's and will never tolerate that kind of issue so i was actually comfortable to talk to my parents about that but not everybody has that kind of safe environment <laughs>在台灣棒球是我們的國球我們都很喜歡我也非常喜歡那我在因為到棒球場上的時候棒球太过于单一性别சரி நாமளும் பண்ணலாமே எனக்கு தான் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் டே தாட்டினால நம்ம வேற லெவல்ல போணும் அப்படிங்கற ஒரு தாட் இருக்கல இது நல்ல ஒரு பெஸ்ட் தான அப்படினு சொல்லிட்டு கார் டிரைவ் கத்துக்கல நான் வந்து காலையில 5:30 க்கு இங்க ஓடுறேன் ஒரு நாள் நம்ம வேலிக்கு போலனா இப்போ 300 500 கட் ஆயிடுச்சுனா இன்னும் நான் ஒரு நாள் போவா சண்டே போய் அந்த காம்பர்மென்ஸ் பண்ணிட்டு வர ஐயோ <laughs> It's such a shame that people will always take into consideration the numbers of harassment cases so they can consider this as an urgent issue. But for me, even there is only one harassment case, it's already an urgent issue. So the first thing that basically you will see if you go to our website is the map of uh, Jakarta. People sometimes they say like, oh, it only happened in a certain place. We want to visualize that it actually happens everywhere. We can see from this map that this uh, gender-based violence is a global problem. You can like literally see all over the world, it happened. I'm 
ஒவ்வொரு டிரைவ் தூரமாக போனோன்னா எனக்கு பயம் இப்போ ராத்திரியில் இருட்டாக இருக்கும் இப்போது ஏர்போர்ட்லேருந்து வருவாங்க இல்லையா அவங்களுக்கெல்லாம் பயம் குட் பாய்ஸ் கூட போயிட்டால் எங்கேயும் இட்டுன்னு போயிடுவாங்க வழி ரூட் தெரியாத இடத்துக்கு இட்டுனு போனாங்க இட்டுன்னு போனோம்னு அட்ரஸ் நம்ம இதை காமிச்சிட்டோம்னா அவங்க இட்டுன்னு போய் எங்கே இட்டுன்னு போய் விட்டுருவாங்களோ நிறைய நியூஸ் கூட வந்திருக்கேன் ஒரு கார் டிரைவர் வந்து ஒரு பொண்ணை இட்டு போய்ட்டு ரேப் பண்ணிட்டு அந்த மாதிரியெல்லாம் ஆயிருக்கு அதால் தான் நிறைய கேர்ள்ஸுங்கும் டிரைவர் ஆகினு இருக்காங்க நிறைய இடத்துல பாருங்க நிறைய எல்லாமே கண்ட்ரோலில் இருக்குது பாய்ஸ் தான் கண்ட்ரோல் வச்சுக்கிறாங்க அதை விட்டு கேர்ள்ஸ் வந்து அதை எப்படின்னா கீழே தள்ளி போட்டுறாங்க அப்படி இருக்கக்கூடாது இந்த வேலைன்ட்டு இல்லை எல்லா வேலையிலையும் எல்லாருக்குமே ஈக்குவல் கொடுங்க உங்களை மாதிரி நாங்களும் ஒரு மனுஷன் தான்ன்றது நான் சொல்ல விரும்புகிறேன்在台湾的性平的部分我觉得身为台湾人我感到非常的骄傲我们台湾是亚洲第一个通过同婚的国家那我们国家也做了非常多的性平的一些教育那在台湾的话法律上呢我们是同婚同仇是没有问题的所以我
almost achieved gender equality, I believe that they used to struggle as well, like us. It's not a battle that we're going to win in, you know, in a short time. This is a long time battle. I still have to fight for this in order for me to be able to have the future that I want. Now, 